In this video, we'll take a look at new options for styling radio buttons and checkboxes in the UX component in uh, Alpha Anywhere. So we have a very simple UX component here with a checkbox control. And if we go into working preview, we can see that the checkbox control is displaying a list of countries from the Northwind uh, uh, customer table. And this is currently just using the default HTML um, styling for a checkbox. We've in our checkbox designer here we specified that the, co the orientation of the checkboxes are columnar as opposed to horizontal or vertical and we specified that the flow is left to right uh, top to bottom at that and that there are three columns. But um, we're using now the, b the default um, built-in styling of a checkbox which um, you can see is uh, pretty drab and also is uh, not very mobile friendly uh, because these checkboxes themselves represent very small targets for a finger. So let's go and see now how we can improve this dramatically. So let's go back to design mode now and we can see now that the checkbox has a property called has custom design for checkbox appearance and then let's bring up the builder and uh, we'll just uh, select the default appearance right now and then come back here and uh, do some uh, additional styling. So now that we've turned on the custom appearance, let's go back there now and we can see that we've now got a much improved appearance uh, for this checkbox. So let's go now and look at some of the options that we have for uh, controlling the appearance of the checkbox. So first of all, let's go here to the uh, designer and let's specify that instead of using a checked image to indicate which um, items have been checked, let's instead use a background color and then let's go and choose the background color. So let's go and choose say that color over there and then we can choose something called the color gap which is um, if we look in our preview here, the color gap is the distance between the, um, the outer border and the actual color itself. So let's go and make our color gap for example 3 pixels and now we can see that there's a, a smaller um, square inside the, uh, the border. So now I'll go back to working preview and then you can see now that we've changed our appearance to use uh, color swatches rather than uh, an image. And let's go back now and do some further customization. Sorry, that's the... Um, uh, here we go. So now let's go, for example, and uh, change this uh, color of this border that goes around um, uh, each uh, uh, selection marker. So we'll go there now and let's choose, say, um, a blue color. Uh, so there we go. So now you can see we've got a blue color over there. Then let's go and make each uh, selection a little bit bigger. So I'll go here and make it, say, uh, uh, 25 pixels by uh, 25 pixels and now that I've done that we can see that um, the uh, uh, size of the box is so big that the uh, label now is uh, jutting into it so let's go now and change the label indent from say 20 pixels to 30 pixels and there we have it set to 30 pixels and then let's also go now and change the, uh, the alignment of this label to be center so that's going to move the label um, into the center of the box over there. So let's co go ahead now and go over to working preview and we can see now that we've basically um, uh, made a big change now. And then let's also go and change the uh, vertical spacing of our um, uh, check boxes. So we'll go here now and uh, let's just uh, make this a little bit bigger so we'll go to our vertical spacing and change that to say 4 pixels and then go overhead now and go back to our working preview there and now we've basically got uh, some more spacing let's change that let's make that even bigger so we'll go back now and make this into say uh, 10 pixels and see how that looks so go there and now we've got more spacing and we've got um, really nice looking uh, checkboxes right now. So now the same uh, principle applies to radio buttons. So let's uh, pause now and pick this up in the next video. So we're continuing with our video now on how to customize the appearance of radio buttons and checkboxes. So let's now go and add a radio button control 
and uh, we'll go over here to radio buttons and we'll just call this RB1 and then let's go and define some uh, static choices for this radio button so I'll go here and type in say red uh, green uh, blue and yellow and now go ahead and uh, preview this so we can see that there's our radio buttons let's basically increase the width the horizontal width of the control so it doesn't wrap so I'll go here and type in say uh, 5 inches so now we have a standard um, Windows uh, or HTML rendition of a radio button again you can see it's not that great looking so let's go now and customize that so we'll go back to our radio button here and again we'll specify um, that uh, we have a custom design for our radio buttons and then open up the designer so you can see here's our designer and there's our radio buttons now um, choosing a check mark as the uh, icon uh, doesn't make as much sense for a radio button so let's go and choose a different image so we'll go here and choose a built-in alpha image and let's go for example and choose say the uh, green um, ball so now there's our, our image and let's go now and preview that so we can see now we have um, our green ball and then again let's um, make this um, say 26 pixels and again we'll go here with 26 pixels and um, preview it so that's that looks pretty good but now we need to again uh, increase the label indent so we'll go there and make that 30 pixels and uh, and then again let's go to uh, center alignment over there go back now to working preview and we can look at our radio buttons now and you can see that we've created some uh, pretty nice radio buttons uh, using icons there and uh, let's go back now and choose an icon not only for the um, uh, checked but also for the unchecked image so we'll go there and then we'll go and let's just choose say the red ball so we'll go there and choose the red ball now so now we've specified an icon for both the checked state and the unchecked state of a radio button so you can see that this is what we've got right now and then if again we want to use a color swatch rather than an icon we can go back over here so let's go back one more time to the uh, to the builder and turn off both the checked icon and the unchecked icon choose a color swatch over there let's go and choose say a green color so we'll go and choose say that color over there and you can see this is what we have right now and then also let's go again and increase the size of the uh, color gap so we'll go here and say three pixels and now we'll go back to uh, working preview so now we've got uh, pretty nice looking uh, radio buttons and then let's make one final tweak let's go and set the um, border radius of this uh, border and also the color so we'll go back now and um, go back to our custom appearance and we can see that currently the border radius is set to 10 pixels which isn't really giving us a nice round appearance there um, so let's make that say uh, 20 pixels which is giving us now a much nicer um, uh, uh, border there and then let's go and change the uh, color to um, say uh, let's choose say that color over there and then click OK and now go back to working preview and now you can see that we've got a very customized appearance for our radio button that is uh, much more attractive than the built-in HTML radio buttons and check boxes so thank you very much for watching this video is an addendum to the video on styling radio buttons and check boxes and it's aimed at users who are interested at uh, what is going on behind the scenes uh, as to how this uh, uh, customized appearance is actually achieved. So if we go back to design mode now and take a look for example at this radio button we can see that in the builder over here there's actually a button here, a uh, hyperlink here called show CSS and uh, when you click the button you can see that uh, some CSS is shown over here this is the uh, CSS that got generated automatically for you 
based on these uh, selections that you made here in the prop sheet. So this um, CSS has been um, added um, uh, to the component. So um, at runtime dialog component name will of course be replaced with the real alias of this component and this, this CSS is now emitted as, uh, as part of the component. Then you can see that if we um, actually go here and uh, we turn off the has custom design for radio button uh, property here we'll see that there's actually a new property in the UX component called the class name for choices and uh, what's happening behind the scenes is that each choice is actually wrapped in a span now and the uh, span can be given an optional um, uh, class name so when you go ahead here and you check this button over here then uh, we uh, hide the span, the the uh, property there because uh, this the class name for that span is going to be automatically be set to this generated CSS. So if we go now and look at this component in Firefox where we can inspect the uh, HTML, so let's go back there and uh, just pull this down and go look at one of these radio buttons. We can see that basically that the radio button itself. Um, uh, here is the radio button, there's the input control and there's the uh, the label has been wrapped in a span control and the span has been given that custom CSS that was generated um, by the builder so, um, uh, so behind the scenes what's happened is Alpha has generated the uh, custom CSS for you based on the choices that you make in the property sheet and then has wrapped the um, input control uh, in a span and applied that class name uh, to uh, to the span. So uh, if this is all done with uh, standard CSS and um, it's actually a really great example of the power of CSS and how Alpha Anywhere lets you harness that power to create really stunning looking um, user interfaces. Thanks very much for watching.